on themselves. And so they're just eating very little. And, and so there's an example where there's a phenomenon that's well researched, but the, the payoff, the, the, um, the price you pay is huge. So you're going around just gaunt, looking like a, like a prisoner of war, right? right. And so, so contrast that, and I did that for a while. I did that for a while. Right. I remember seeing the picture. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, and contrast that with what I'm suggesting today, which is, well, there's not nearly as much research having been done on autophagy, and so instead we're going to have to uh, use a bit of, of, of reasoning here, like if the body is deprived of the essential amino acids, might it go to the, this you know, free protein that's floating around in the cell? And there are, there are at least several studies that show that when you have that amino acid deprivation, you see the increase of, of you see the formation of autophagosomes and things like that, which we have to assume is because the cell is trying to do auto, autophagy and things like that. And the reason I'm willing to, to, to follow the, the protocol, what became the protocol that I'm calling the Witten protocol now, I never intended to name it anything, I just wanted to follow a protocol that made sense for me, is because uh, worst case scenario, you're going to uh, look really good, have good body composition, feel great, you know, have steady energy levels, and, um, and be actually really satisfied all the time and not fall prey to a lot of the standard American diet stuff. So worst case, like it's a, you know, potentially a type 2 diabetes reversing body leaning, you know, protocol to follow. And right. best case, you're also getting the life extension benefits, anti-aging benefits of the calorie restriction. And, uh, you know, being being in my my early 30s, I'm willing to roll the dice on this one and maybe miss out on a few years of hardcore calorie restriction if that turns out to be the only way. You're really missing out, dude. I am really yeah. missing. And 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 just to, to put a finer point on this, there's there's a good amount of evidence that says that alternate day calorie restriction gets you the same benefits as as overall calorie restriction and. And yes. that would mean skipping, you know, skipping a meal, skipping eating for a day and then eating as much as you want the next day. And the most important thing there, I think, is not that you should skip eating for a day and go eat as much as you want the next day. The most important point there is that it shows just how ignorant we are of what the actual mechanism is for the life extension. We thought it was overall calories. Well, it's probably not. So. Right. <clears throat> yeah. The I, I actually I've I found the literature on that last night and they were talking about pretty much calorie restriction and alternate day fasting has pretty much the same reaction as far as the autophagic response except in neurons hmm. it seems that neuronal repair and plasticity is heavily dependent on that alternate day fasting and not on just pure calorie restriction hmm. um, wait and, i'm say that again with the adcr the the neuronal autophagy occurred or did not occur so what was your first set of uh <laughs> abbreviations AD, <laughs> alternate day calorie oh, restriction alter- adcr oh ADF is it, is that okay if we use that sure. alternate day fasting? Yeah. Uh, so the alternate day fasting did trigger the neuronal autophagy and the plasticity that comes along with that. Uh, in the in the one mouse study I found where they were trying to determine if calorie restriction or the alternate day fasting would speed recovery from spinal injury, then only the alternate day fasting was able to increase. Um, neuronal formation and brought back a lot of nervous Whoa. impulse to the mouse. So even superior possibly. Correct. Gosh. All the other reactions seem to be the same, but this, this um, plasticity in the brain and the uh, nervous system cells yeah. was heavily dependent on the alternate day fasting. And that's so cool because I mean, it's so important to the neurons because they're, uh, it may be that so many neurodegenerative diseases are just the buildup of, of the junk that's not being, autophaged right right um, and so wouldn't it be cool if this trend continues and we find that um, through some sort of carb and protein cycling you can get all the benefits and, and get the body comp you want and all that and not have to go days without eating yeah I, I'm, I'm still pretty convinced that it's what I would like to see is it, it most of the time now it's it's just interesting how trends happen because we're so stuck on this idea that you either eat carbs or you eat a certain way or you don't eat. Mm-hmm. So we'll test fasting before we'll test a very high ketogenic diet right. against some of these methods. And I did find other research that was very specific to, okay, they tested fasting against a normal carbohydrate-based diet that were they were all um, isocaloric against a ketogenic diet. And the ketogenic diet 
and the fasting produced the same autophagic results. The diet that contained any amount of sugar whatsoever shut it off. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there's a strong connection there, and I think you're on the right path yeah. that you could cycle carb. You could cycle your nutrients <clears throat> and essentially get all these effects of alternate day fasting without ever right, fasting. Right. And and so what you just said, I, I, I um, it may be that, you know, the kind of autophagy they were tracking there was just the CMA. Right. And so uh, this guy, Dr. Ron Mignery, M-I-G-N-E-R-Y, has written this this book called Protein Cycling, and and his his opinion there, based on the the dozens and dozens of of, of uh, publications you can go research yourself at the end of the book, uh, are that the the other kinds of of autophagy may be triggered with protein restriction. So I'd like I would I would like to see. Um, more evidence, but it it may be that that even in the presence of carbohydrate, just without the protein uh, being present, you can get the other kinds of, of autophagy. Right. And so it, my hope is, and what I've the protocol I've designed is is to get you a lot of that carrier mediated autophagy five days a week, and then to induce these two periods where we're we're getting this non selective macro micro autophagy going on. Do you think it's possible that that is I'm I'm not sure how much you know about the mTOR pathway in, in relationship to autophagy, but do you think it's possible that that protein restriction is purely a mechanism of shutting down the mTOR pathway that's allowing those micro and macro? I don't know because didn't you say that that only you know in the presence of carbohydrate it wouldn't be carbohydrates? Yeah, uh, so glucose is a direct stimulator of mTOR yeah, as yeah. is insulin, but, but so is if they're leucine. yeah, and so the question is if 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 you know glucose is present, but we have protein deprivation, maybe the body says let's turn it on anyway, or, or right. the mTOR pathway you know cuts yeah. down then so. Yeah, my my curiosity would be if it's if it really is protein deprivation or if it's specifically leucine deprivation. Yeah. Because of all the amino acids, leucine is the direct stimulator of the mTOR pathway, and it also is a direct stimulator of insulin release. So yeah. Well, and there's the, another study together. now that's saying that um, what is it glutamine? Am I pronouncing that? Correctly? Yes. Well, yeah. Um, that just depriving that may even get the anti-aging benefits of calorie restriction True. so there's so it's yeah, the wild it's, west right right and right well what i like so not everybody here knows what your goal is yeah. in in studying this autophagy and, and i think you phrased it really well at the conference which was to come up with go ahead uh so that was two conferences ago so let me think but the the <laughs> optimal diet for the human being might be yeah. one way i put it and, and yeah. optimal to me means that um you're going to be living free of all the Western diseases that are plaguing folks, and also ideal means that uh, whatever practical anti-aging uh, uh, mechanisms could be triggered, that we want to get those going. Um, you know, peak mental performance as well, um, and that we're also going to have really good body composition. So, um, I'm I'm not quite. Um, like where you might be key for the community you're in and trying to, uh, uh, the physique you're going for. Um, but I've got like all the muscle that I want right now. And, and I could get more on this protocol without, um, without any problems. So I want good body composition. Um, I just think that's an unnecessary thing to have to give up in this situation. And then satiety. So that to me, if we could hit all of those and I kind of, in my last talk had a Venn diagram of showing all these things overlapping, is there a way to hit all those? So, and, and this is where I really got into your lecture because you're coming from this strictly from a health point of view. Yeah. You, you really are trying to create the optimal diet for health and just normal living, normal performance. Yeah, right. And I came at it from totally opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the community that I am in is concerned about aesthetics. Mm -hmm. What's your body fat level? You know, I can pretty much get anybody to any body fat level near death yeah. if they want. Right. Um, not that I'm excited to do that, but, you know, you, you get pretty close to those minimum levels of body fat when you get on stage. And the methodology I used for this aesthetic slash basic health protocol, you know, my goal originally was to just help people lose fat. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. And coming at it from that angle... And your health angle, we've 
almost collided mm -hmm. in protocols. You know, carbonite is not that far off of of your cycling protocol. You basically go very low carbohydrate for five days. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And then you have a day of high carbohydrate and that's the day that you restrict protein, correct? Exactly. And all through, through all of this, just copious amounts of fat. So right. I'm on a, I'm on a 70% fat diet, uh, about, and I don't, I, I track it once in a while just to see what's going on to get into reestablish my sort of intuitive sense of what's right. in food. But, um, it's, it's, it's almost never below 70%. Is that 70% by calorie or by calorie? That's what I'm talking right. about. So I usually go 50, 50 by weight, okay. which comes out to the 70% okay. by calorie. Um, and, and on the days where I'm restricting protein and I've lost, you know, access to that macronutrient, I'll find the, the fat intake, if I track it, is, is up at 80, 85, you know, 87%. Wow. <laughs> uh, and then and I probably could go higher carb there, but sometimes there's, there's just so few carbs in my house now that I actually have to, like, go looking for <laughs> one. Like, I have to break the glass with a hammer and get the sweet potato out of the, you know, out of the jar. Right. <laughs> yeah, we do find that when we've been on carb night for a while and, like, Kiefer's clients and um, everybody like when you get to carb night, you're like, Oh shoot, I didn't plan to have a cheesecake or I didn't mm -hmm. plan to go get like cupcakes or something like that. And you're just like, Oh, what am I going to eat? Yeah. Right. So that begs the question, what are your, you do it all day, correct? You, you'll eat carbs for the entire day. Uh, well, essentially. I mean, if you're only getting, well, actually not really. So, carbs. so, um, it's actually, uh, can be tough to find, uh, carbs that don't have, trace amount of, amounts of protein that end up adding up and, and taking you out of what we think is the autophagy kind of zone. So um, that's probably, that right there, thanks for asking that, is probably why uh, the carbs aren't aren't higher you just gotta you just gotta be careful um and actually i guess if you're if you're talking about the cheesecake or the refined sort of kind of junk foods out there it's probably easier to find than lacking <laughs> right, protein yeah. if you're just sticking to pure paleo foods which is sort of the angle i'm coming from i i didn't uh, i came out of a, of a family with um diabetes and I actually went looking for the, the cure for diabetes if there was one or the cause for diabetes mm -hmm. and so I ended up down this paleo path where now a banana seems like mm -hmm. dessert to me right so that's <laughs> right. Cause it's got more fructose than a you know strawberry yeah, so that's right. and that's that's honestly the world I live in now and it's <laughs> and it's actually pretty enjoyable um, but uh, so so the carb um, limitation there it's it's i eat half a sweet p potato on that day just because it has one and a half uh, grams of protein and if i i could have a whole one but then i just have to watch some other things so you're trying to stay under 15 grams of, of protein for somebody my size that's what i was about to ask yeah. what the where does that number come from so that again comes from um the calculations by dr ron mcnary he's got these charts and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing um and actually he's he's saying you know for a, for a hundred and 160 pound person you know 15 grams i'm forgetting it's like is it maybe 0.15 grams per pound of body weight or something like that um oh, i'm blanking what were we talking about <laughs> where where the 15 grams that's where that came number from. comes from right and right he, and he's doing that i'm back based on a 24 hour period and i actually <laughs> go for a 32 hour period so there's definitely concern in our audience that you, you know, going that low protein on any given day, you're going to lose some of that hard earned muscle. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys have to say about that? Sure. I was definitely prepared for this question, knowing the audience that I was, <laughs> right. was coming for. So first of all, I, I might want to start off by saying um, that we ought to find some, some muscle sparing properties by consuming, let's say 1600 calories of fat instead of nothing in a day. Correct. Right. So that's part of the protocol that we're not talking about. Like I've read your uh, criticism of IF being a pure, um, a pure fast, right, an entire Correct. fast, and I think that is greatly mitigated the catabolic sort of processes if you're consuming all that fat and.